friends. It is January 30th, 2020, and that means that tomorrow, February 1st, is the official beginning of the Book 2 Prize Judging. And um, I just went to the library and picked up four out of my six books that I am reading. So I, it's, it's actually a real relief that I get to at least talk to the camera about these books prior to being able to talk to them and put this out into the world, but at least I get to record my thoughts here. So I have um, gotten four of the books in nonfiction group G. I'm gonna start with these four. And um, I do have the other one on hold, both the other two on hold, one on audio on hold and one on uh, hard copy, but I wanted to just start off with four. So I've looked through them and I have uh, gone through their length uh, just to start, get some sort of order uh, into them. So the least lengthy is Savage Appetites, Four True Stories of Women, Crime and Obsession by Rachel Monroe. Um, this was not a book I voted for, and to be honest with you, this is not a book I would read in real life because I don't really like true crime. But uh, in, in order to be as objective as possible and give it the best chance that I can, I think I'm going to start with this book uh, because A, it's the shortest, B, um, I think if I haven't read any of the others yet, it will give this one the best chance of impressing me. Uh, if I had started reading one of the others and really loved it and then started this one, it might dissuade me from being fair. So that's going to be my strategy um, for this round. I'm gonna read this one first. Uh, and then these other ones are in no particular order. How to Be an Anti-Racist by Ibram X. Kendi. Um, I did vote for this one. And February is also Black History Month. So even though I can't talk about reading this in February right now to everybody as part of my TBR, I will definitely be reading this in February. Uh, so I will take this one. This is the second shortest. And I will be reading this one. I might start reading it while I'm still reading Savage Appetites, I'm not sure, but um, this one definitely I wanna get done in February. The next one in group G is No Visible Bruises, What We Don't Know About Domestic Violence Can Kill Us by Rachel Louise Snyder. I did not vote for this one. I do, no, I didn't vote for this one. And again, I wouldn't say this is something that I would read um, by choice. But uh, I want to keep an open mind about it. I want to, I, I mean, I'm keeping an open mind about all of them. And I will definitely um, judge it on its merits and see how it fits in comparison to the rest of the books in the group. And The Ice at the End of the World, John Gertner, an epic journey into Greenland's buried past and our perilous future. So I voted for this one. It sounds really interesting to me. I have not read anything about Greenland. I don't know very much about Greenland. So I'm hoping that this weaves the science and the history together in a really um, fluid way. Uh, really excited to read this one. But yeah, this one is long, although there's a lot of notes. So it's 300 pages of regular text and then a lot of notes, as you can see, it's pretty thick. So the two books that I don't have right now are um, Five Days Gone, The Mystery of My Mother's Disappearance as a Child by Laura Cumming. I have that one on hold uh, when it comes due. And um, The Ungrateful Refugee, What Immigrants Never Tell You by Dina Nayeri. And that one is the one I'm hoping to listen to on audio. So those two books will definitely be later on books. Potentially, I'll read them at the beginning of March, and I'm going to try to get through these four first. So I think that's it for now. That's my established check-in of this vlog. Um, I also haven't decided if I'm going to show one book per vlog or if I will put multiple books per blog. Um, 
it may be more efficient to put two per vlog and then I'd have six that sorry then I'd have three it's Friday it's been a long week <laughs> then I would have three vlogs two books for vlog uh, or I might just do a wrap up. I don't know. I don't know. I can't decide yet. This is, this is the thing. It, this is kind of the interesting challenge about this project is that I've seen other judges from last year's videos and how they did it. Um, I, um, I enjoyed watching them and it's hard to know you know, how it's going to work for me to put them in a video. But for now, I think what I'm going to say initially right now, I'm just going to make a call. These two books will be the rest of this video. And I will put the other books in another video. So check in with you again later. Hey, everyone. I wanted to give you my first check-in uh, for the Booktube Prize reading. I'm halfway through Savage Appetites, Four True Stories of Women, Crime, and Obsession by Rachel Monroe. I think overall uh, her writing style is pretty accessible. She weaves personal narrative in with her factual information and it's really about like each chapter centers on a woman who Rachel T. Monroe associates with the the trait that she's trying to portray. So the first two were the detective and the victim. I'm not sure if her narr like her mixing of her own experience with the these characters works for me. So, so far, um, yeah, I mean, I, I find it hard to read about this, especially when you feel like, okay, I'm just going to have to deal with, you know, four crime stories. And actually, there's way more than that in here. There's just like a whole bunch of types of crime stories and how much people care about them and so yeah just just it's a little bit um it's a little bit all over the place for me and um you know i'm gonna keep going because this is for the book two prize so there's not an option to not read this hi everyone i just finished savage appetites by rachel monroe and uh wow this is a heavy hitting book <laughs> and um i overall found it very difficult to read uh not being someone that enjoys true crime as entertainment uh reading this book was difficult for me. Um, I don't like learning gory details about murders. I don't really like trying to investigate um, why people do terrible things because I don't think there's some big ultimate reason. And um, I do think that uh, I, I do think that there is an audience for this book and I just am not that person I'm not that person so it maybe it's unfair that I have to judge this book in some ways because it's just not something I read but what I found really interesting about the ending is that we go through these stories and Monroe tells us about four women in particular she labels them the detective, the victim, the defender, and the killer. She goes into her own personal history in following true crime, her own obsession with following true crime. And I, I find a time she kind of blatantly included everyone into this category, saying that everyone finds it interesting, everyone's obsessed with it, everyone's 
fascinated by it. And I'm not judging people that are, if you are, and you find something, you know, that reveals something about human nature to you, or you enjoy it, like, you know, great. I'm glad you do, because everybody should be entertained. I just really don't. And so I didn't really like being mass included into this grouping. And what I found bizarre was that at the end of this book, she talks about this crime con conference she was at and an activity that she was in in this conference and how the presenter basically made all the people endure this reenactment of um, a crime scene and that she was getting really angry and she was not enjoying the experience and that she suddenly realized that she could stop, that she could stop the experience because she was in control and she wasn't actually living this moment. And I thought, wow, that's the way I felt reading your book. I wish I could stop because <laughs> I don't want to experience this. Like I can't unread the things that I've read in this book. Okay. The horrible things that people have done that I just read about in this book are, are now part of who I am. So this has not converted me to become a true crime reader. Um, I would say it's a three star book. Um, I mean, to me, because it, you know, it 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 was fairly, it was well researched. I I liked the parts that she wrote about the people she was talking about. Her own personal story didn't always work for me, um, but. You know, she tried to make, she also tried to make some assumptions and connections about the way people feel and do and be, which I thought were, she was stretching a bit, but, uh, you know, overall, I think, um, it was fine. And again, it's my first finish of the six. And, uh, if I had to guess right now, right now it's in sixth. <laughs> um, I'm hoping that everything else that I read is going to be better than this. And um, I actually have started The Ungrateful Refugee because that was on audio and it came in at the library. So I checked it out right away and started listening to it. And it is read by the author and really enjoying it. It is very good. So um, yeah, we'll see once I'm done the other books where this ranks, but um, I'm not going to assume it's at the top for me at all. And I really hope that I enjoy the other books more than I enjoy this one. So I did read it quickly, though, so that is a good thing. At least I got through it quickly and I can move on now. So I will check in again once I am done another book. everybody. I wanted to check in because I was just thinking about um, my reading experience so far for Book Two Prize and I just wanted to kind of share those thoughts with you. Um, currently I have finished one book. I finished Savage Appetites. I am currently reading How to Be an Anti-Racist by Ibram X. Kendi and The Ungrateful Refugee by Dana Nayeri. Um, at the same time. So I'm listening to one and I'm reading the other. And uh, what I've noticed, I'm also folding laundry. So if you see random laundry, I'm sorry. Um, what I have noticed in the experience of reading these two books at the same time is that inevitably they're kind of playing off each other a little bit. And I don't really like that feeling. So um, as I said before, this is my first time being a judge and um, I'm very much feeling out the process. I don't really know what my process is going to be. I, I often read books simultaneously, two books at the same time, three books at the same time. I, I, I can do that but there are times where reading two books at once you if you fall in love with one book it inevitably influences your feelings about the other one because you don't have the same desire to read that book and so it kind of starts to put 
that book into a bit of a lesser place in your mind. And I don't want that to happen with these books because I want to be as objective as I possibly can. So I'm going to continue on because when you get an audiobook from the library, at least in my library system, I get 21 days with it. And uh, it's a fairly long book and I don't want to um, potentially lose it because I did have it on hold and then it came available. So it's potentially going to be put on hold again by someone else. Uh, so I'm going to keep reading them both at the same time. But um, I think from now on, the only time that I will sim simultaneously read two of the nonfiction books at the same time is if um, I'm in a time crunch and I have to, like there's no other choice. I've taken too long and I've got to get them done because I don't want to have my enjoyment of one book overshadow my experience reading the other book. So I just wanted to share that with you. Um, I am enjoying both of these books very much. They are both really hard hitting, interesting uh, perspectives. And I just wanted to check in and let you know that. Hi everybody. So I have finished the first three books in my six books for the book two prize. And I wanted to um, wrap up the other two. I wrapped up uh, Savage Appetites already, obviously. Uh, so the next one that I read was How to Be an Anti-Racist by Ibram X. Kendi. And right now in my grouping, this is the book to beat. This is number one um, out of what I've read so far. This is a super important book. And um, it has blown my head open and rewired things in my brain and explained a lot of the essence of what racism is and how to the roots of things and how to actually really affect change. Um, Kendi was able to weave his life into this um, text, but he did it in a way that was always very succinct. So he was always like to the point. So only things about his personal life that were super relevant to the points he was trying to make in each section about um, what racism is and what it is not and how it has evolved and how it has been structured and how it is ingrained into the structures of society and how um, those things then become internal, internalized by humans uh, were, you know, it was all in, it was all woven so well. Um, it's not a very long book. It's only 236 pages, but in that time, he's able to get his points across very articulately and with a lot of calm and um, a very objective, or I mean, it can't be objective, I guess, but just in a clear way that makes you understand and is allows you to reflect on who you are through his own reflections of who he is and how he's come to where he is as an anti-racist. So um, I will purchase this book. This this copy is from the library, but I will purchase it myself and keep it. It is basically a handbook for anyone that is seeking um, justice in this world. And it will help you to understand your role in um, perpetuating racism and um, all the other things that are attached to racism. Uh, which he explains so brilliantly in this book. So class racism, um, gender racism, um, homophobic racism, like all the, the isms and how they connect is really well explained here. So this is, you know, such an important book. I think if you only read one nonfiction book this year or ever, <laughs> read this one because this will help. It helps. It I, I have found it to be 
very, very important. And so, so affecting um, at this time with all that's going on in the world. Um, the second book I finished was on audio and that was The Ungrateful Refugee by Dina Neary and um, also really, really well written. Uh, she conveys such important stories, uh, her own refugee story, as well as the stories of countless refugees and how they have been affected. So in some instances, she goes into great detail and tells you the personal narrative of some people. And then in other instances, she's relaying personal narratives um, through other people who help refugees. Uh, she focuses mostly on the systems in the United States, the UK, and um, the Netherlands. And because those are the, I think, the systems that she um, studied the most. And she did extensive research, years and years of research, as well as having her own personal uh, account of her own personal story. Her way of relaying her own personal story and, and interweaving it with the text was was very well done. It wasn't quite as well done as um, How to Be an Anti-Racist. So I'm putting that one in number two right now. And um, like the, again, such important, an important topic to read about right now and what's happening in the world and to understand the layers of belonging and the layers and the ideas of um, assimilation and when refugees move to a new country and then they are accepted into the country, how that process goes for them and what they feel like and how they have to integrate into society and, and the judgments around that. Um, all super, super interesting and compellingly told in a way that makes you really feel so much... Um, emotion and connection to other human beings. And so both of these books were just so deeply, deeply felt by me. Um, I was moved to tears by both of them several times because they just have that level of human story and they're they're heavy and they're deep and they are asking you to put aside your own personal bias and to actually but also look inside yourself and examine those bias and like challenge where they come from so really great reads um but given how deeply effective they were and how emotional I found reading both of them was I'm gonna switch gears slightly for my next read and, and read um, The Ice at the End of the World by John Gertner. Uh, this one is the longest out of all of the books so I'm gonna move on with this one. I'm gonna end this vlog here and I will start a new one in which I talk about the next three books and take a little bit of a break from um, such personal and uh, stories. Hopefully, I, I think this one may be personal as well, but it's going to be more about science and climate change and the earth as opposed to individual people and their stories. And so, and then after that, I will get back to the other one, which is about domestic violence. I just felt I needed a little bit of a break in between um, from these super personal and riveting stories to just um, get my emotions a little bit more level. So thanks so much for watching this vlog and I will be back again um, with the other three books and I may include my final rankings um, in the next vlog or I may make a separate video. It depends how long the other one gets. But thank you so much for watching and I'll be back again soon.